Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's Busiest Music Nerd, and it's time for a stink piece! Where, uh, I have to defend myself from being accused of pandering to the alt-right. And I guess, uh, let's just get into it. The article starts off well enough saying I'm the most famous music critic. That's true. Thank you. But then quickly gets into, I guess, the, the heart of the matter, and that is my now dead meme channel, that is the plan. The writer talks about the channel as if it were intended to be some kind of TND offshoot, even though it precedes TND and was originally just the channel I used to use to go and just enjoy YouTube as a YouTube user. But then as the Needle Drop fan base grew and the channel got bigger and I needed a place to put other forms of content like vlogs or just videos where I would give random thoughts on music, I would put them there. And occasionally I would experiment with these funny, disingenuous shitpost videos where I would freak out about being name-checked by things like Pitchfork or Vice or the band Swimmers recently where I would just get really angry and totally unreasonable. As the article points out, I started putting out these incriminating meme-y shitpost videos. One where I talked about this annoying guy who was comparing Pokemon Go to dog fighting because they're not comparable, it's not the same thing. Another video where I lampooned the idea of changing your gender because of Donald Trump because I was responding to another video that insinuated that as a man you should feel ashamed that Donald Trump is a guy and you're a guy, as if I'm somehow responsible or feel some kind of connection to him through his masculinity, which I don't, I just think he's a scumbag. <laughs> And then the article brings up my video where I talked about Pepe the Frog triggering Hillary Clinton. Spoiler, she, she wasn't actually triggered, it's, it's, it's a joke. Which is kind of funny that this video comes up in this article that's trying to paint me as being alt-right, because this is easily one of the most liberal videos that were on the channel. I made this video as a response to the fact that Hillary Clinton and the mainstream media in general were blowing up the alt-right, providing legitimacy to guys like Richard Spencer and racist internet trolls looking to co-opt meme culture, specifically figures like Pepe the Frog, rather than actually providing progressive policies in her platform to bring over the progressive side of the Democratic Party. And the mainstream left was just letting them have it. So you're telling me that within the span of like a couple months, uh, like 30 or so people have essentially turned this meme that was previously enjoyed by millions into a white supremacist symbol? I mean, that's not really how memes work, because if it was, then I simply could, using the hashtag make Pepe great again, because there are definitely 20 to 30 people in my audience willing to do this, uh, associate Pepe instead of with Nazi propaganda, uh, Allied powers propaganda. We could have Uncle Sam Pepe, uh, Rosie the Riveter Pepe, buy war bonds Pepe. And this was one of many joke videos on my meme channel with a pretty obvious liberal slant. I had top five reasons Obama was a great president, which was kind of funny, M mostly ridiculous. Top five Donald Trump cabinet picks, where every single cabinet pick was actually a cartoon villain from a, a famous animation. I know, it was, it was a pretty genius idea. Dr. Claw, as Secretary of Education, I fully agree with this, and I have to come out and say how strongly I agree with this because there have been people that, disgustingly so, have been calling Dr. Claw's PhD into question. So what if Dr. Claw didn't go to some hoity-toity liberal arts four-year university? Online university is perfectly fine. No shame at all in getting an online degree, guys. My Bernie versus Hillary meme review where I gave Sanders primary one the 21 air horn salute. <laughs> and a rap song that I recorded when I was upset that Democratic congressmen had voted nay on a bill that would allow us to import cheaper drugs that would save lives and save money from Canada. Tell, Tell me you want a photo prescription. You voted against that Bernie shit. Why? What's wrong with it? It's our drugs at a lower price. If you pass it now, that'd be really nice. Which, when you're done with this video, please do something that matters and actually contact your local congressperson and tell them that you still want this to happen. So next, the article pushes this idea that uh, I've, I've become an edgelord. Dun dun dun! And the first shocking reveal is, is this photo? Is this photo of, of, of me during a video where I'm parodying Hobson fans? And the full reveal of this photo is this. The man is hanging himself with toilet paper. Toilet paper, not a noose. Which, if you didn't know, has been a pretty viral internet meme over the past year or so. Kids blowing up on platforms like the now defunct Vine just kind of, uh, <laughs> hanging themselves with toilet paper in the bathroom and 
like dropping off of their bathtubs. And off of sharing this meme, you're going to insinuate that I'm an alt-writer and that I'm racist and I want people, specifically black people, to be hurt. The article then goes on to paint my connections to the music board on 4chan, which there are connections. I used to go on there before the needle drop was even a thing pretty regularly. And the article acts like I, I consciously gained this audience by being some kind of manipulative meme master when the fact of the matter is they came to me. Like the MU section of 4chan has been flooding my comments on YouTube as early as 2011. I mean, they had been posting my reviews at the time about as often as they post pitch work reviews. It's almost like I do music reviews and that's relevant to the discussion on the board or something. This might not seem like a big point, but keep in mind the whole narrative of this article is that I'm up here pulling the strings, trying to figure out ways to get the alt-right to watch me. Ha 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 So the channel ended up getting hit kind of hard during the adpocalypse and it was getting worse and worse and worse, which I've tweeted about, which I've mentioned in live streams that the channel is nearly on its deathbed. And the ad revenue the channel was getting was never really that large to begin with. There's a point in the article where the writer muses about me having made $2,000 off of two of the worst videos on the channel. Honestly, I was lucky if I made $2,000 off the channel in a month, much less off of a couple videos. The article then goes on to make a mention of the YouTube right. YouTube becoming more extreme and conservative and, and right-wing, mentioning guys like PewDiePie and Paul Joseph Watson. But the writer of this article throws me into that grouping as well without even a mere mention of the fact that I hate Paul Joseph Watson. And there's a video on my main channel where I take him to task on that that has more views than nearly every video on That Is The Plan. Somehow that didn't make it into this incredibly well-researched piece of journalism. The article also brings up my avoidance of using the N-word in my reviews. And yes, I don't use it for the reasons stated in the video referenced in this article and linked down there in the description. However, the writer takes my Greatest Rapper Ever series on That Is The Plan and tries to use that as proof that I have a secret agenda against hip-hop and black artists and that I'm disingenuous. He literally puts no detail about the J. Cole video in this article because it's, it's not disturbing at all. And the writer's inability to understand humor is painfully clear when he tries to explain the joke. The gag is simple. He pretends to rap in the style of these artists. No. That is not the gag of the video. The gag of this series is to make fun of over-eager fans who think a rapper is really profound and deep beyond compare to the point where they've achieved human perfection, to the point where that fan will overlook flaws in that artist as a person. Which is why my character in the Hobson video takes all of his lyrics as gospel, puts too much stock in his anti-drug stance, and treats his words like a doctrine or a mantra that he repeats to the point where he goes insane because of his obsession, leading to a downward spiral of self-destruction. It has nothing to do with Hobson's mental state, as the writer tries to claim. Hobson's mental state isn't mentioned in this video once, neither overtly or subtly, and every one of my Greatest Rapper Ever videos is linked down below in the description box. I challenge viewers to look at them and, and see what's so heinous about them. And in the video about XXX Tentacion fans, my joke referencing domestic violence was clearly at the expense of fans who refused to believe the claims. The joke is that fan refusing to let any new or gruesome information sway his undying love for X. Like, that's so painfully clear. My stance on these issues has been painfully clear as well, which if had done any research, he would probably have caught videos where I talked about the domestic violence allegations against XXX Tentacion, or even what recently happened with ASAP Bari, who I'm still kind of peeved that he has not been ousted from the ASAP mob. Those videos are linked below. Later in the article, we get this smoking gun saying, that is the plan never released any parodies of white rock musicians. Uh, again, it's kind of a moot point because it's, it's not a parody of the rapper himself, it's a parody of his over-eager fans. The writer fails to mention that I have actually harshly critiqued and clowned on white artists and rock musicians in the past on my main channel, where I do it without a lick of irony or satire, which pretty much everything on that is the plan is shrouded in. Miley Cyrus, Corey Feldman, especially Corey Feldman. I did a not good on Post Malone, and uh, as well as on Little Peep. The writer also tries to imply that I have some kind of ridiculous connection to this cult of keck bullshit. 
uh, because the word kek appeared in one of my meme videos because it's a bastardization of the word LOL, which there have been many versions of over the years, LEL and LUL. But of course there's nothing to that, so all he can show is this screenshot. And then we have me in front of yet another reaction image. And countless accounts, including tons of accounts on Black Twitter, have used this as a reaction image. Yet the writer is acting like I'm not referencing meme culture on my meme channel. Like I'm putting this picture up because I have some kind of deep twisted desire for violence to happen. A desire that's only apparent when you read into satirical joke videos on a surface level. The article comes back to the n-word and insinuates that casually rattling it off with uh, no care in the world is essentially the equivalent of me talking about memes and genres of memes that prominently feature that word in the meme itself. All of the article's examples of this come by way of my deep fried memes video, which if the writer cared to watch the video, the most unironic part of all of it was my legitimate explanation of the origin of these memes. I mean, they're essentially memes inspired by and memes that come from black Twitter and Instagram that have been filtered through one, two, three, four too many filters to the point where they get really grainy, really, um, you know, uh, kind of a, uh, uh, brittle looking. Often there's crude language in them, often the n-word is in them, and we're supposed to sit here and act like this is some sort of major ideological disconnect for me, when in reality I'm talking about a certain genre of memes, so those kinds of memes come up in the video, just as feminist memes came up in my Trigglypuff video. And I rationalize that the same way I have to when I review an album that has the n-word in the lyrics, or when I have to have lyrics flash up in front of my face that have the n-word in them. The writer pretty much admits in in the article that he's too lazy to explain all of this, so he just says, Anthony thinks the n-word is funny. That's all you need to know. The writer really saved the best for last here, uh, where he finally brings up what he thinks are my ties to the alt-right. Keep in mind, the whole point of this article is to prove that I'm alt-right. Alt-right is right in the title, but he couldn't mention this until the very end of the article, or that he had so little evidence of this that it ends up here at the finish. He tries this two ways. One, with me interviewing YouTuber and political commentator Sargon of Akkad, which I did back in 2015, shortly after the whole Gamergate thing kind of died out, because I thought it was interesting that he as a figure rose out of this sudden, out-of-nowhere online movement that a lot of places and publications were covering up until this point. I don't see how I couldn't, in my own way. The article brings up Sargon's tasteless response to British Labour MP Jess Phillips, as if that was the context of our conversation, when that wouldn't happen until deep into the following year. The writer even goes on to say that Sargon himself has disavowed the alt-right and has made multiple videos critiquing them. So you're trying to tie me to the alt-right and your first attempt at doing that is through a man who has critiqued them and torn them apart and is routinely harassed by them because he thinks their hatred of Jewish people, their Nazi sympathies, and their white-centric identity politics are silly. And then the article claims that my conversation with Sargon was like me doing market research. On what I don't know, the alt-right? At this point, the alt-right wasn't a thing. Next, the writer ties me to comedian and edgelord supreme Sam Hyde, who I also interviewed on my podcast. And he tries to muddy context again, acting like Sam's alt-right associations and fringe views were all well-established by the time that we had a conversation, which is not true. By the time Sam and I talked, he hadn't even gotten his show on Adult Swim yet, which ended up getting removed because of all of that. I mean, by the time I talked to Sam, deeply left-wing publications like BuzzFeed had covered him too, because because of his uh, TED Talk troll at Drexel University, the 2070 paradigm shift. Now, after this introduction of Sam into the article comes the grossest accusations in the entire piece, yet also the grossest inaccuracies. So even though the language in this paragraph is very dark, I'm going to read the whole thing and read it carefully, because this will most likely be the most important part of this video. Most important part of the video. Hyde's conversation with Fantano is horrific, offensive, and enlightening as to where both men stand. Fair warning, he describes raping and murdering her. At one point, Hyde brings up Lena Dunham and describes in detail what he would like to do to the actress. I'll take extra time, okay, he says. I'll be nailing her, I'll be punching her in the back of the neck, I'll be boxing her eyes in, I'll break her orbital bones, I'm going to destroy Lena Dunham so badly that the people that come to clean her up, they're going to be puking when they see what I did to her. I want them to know how I feel about her, so I'm going to fuck her up so bad that they're going to puke when they see her bruised, mangled body. So basically the writer says that Sam, 
without warning, goes into a tirade of threats of physical violence and rape. And I'm on the other end laughing, I'm egging him on, and as, as the, the writer claims, I'm wishing I could do what he does, when there are actually three incredibly large mischaracterizations of this entire scenario. One, for Sam this is a comedy bit, and he sets it up essentially by talking about Lena Dunham threatening him physically, the point of the joke being that everything that he says afterwards is allegedly justified because he felt threatened physically, his life was in danger. Two, the writer brings rape up in this paragraph, and yet through Sam's entire rant, as psychotic as it is, he doesn't bring up rape not one time. The entire podcast is linked down below. The rant starts around the 25 minute mark. But yes, the article makes direct reference to R-A-P-E, and yet it is not H-E-R-E. -E. And the thing is, Fader knows they messed up on this because I'm reading the first and original version of the article. They've actually changed this paragraph at least twice. There's another version where they change the phrasing simply to rape and murder, and then in the third and latest version, from my understanding, it just says violence toward a woman. The three archive dot IS saves of this article, the original version, the second version, and the latest version, or at least what is the latest version of the time he's shooting this video, are saved down below in the description box. Check them out for yourself. And number three, my reaction to what Sam is saying and doing is not at all how the writer characterizes it. So as Sam is ramping up this bit that he thinks is funny, I'm sitting here telling him that a lot of people are going to be listening to this podcast. Are you sure you want to say this? Uh... Fucking retard. Um, I mean, I've, I know, I've talked to her. I know, I know who she is. She's a, she's a dumb bitch. I'm sorry. Okay. And if she ever, if she ever fucks with me, <laughs> if she ever puts me into some sort of self-defense situation. Time out. A lot of people are going to hear this podcast. Yeah. So, okay. If she puts right. me in a self-defense situation, okay, and I have to legally defend myself, uh -huh. okay, I'm not going to initiate violence against her. Okay. He hears me. He responds, I'm trying to insert some logic into the situation, and he just keeps going. I try to throw yet another logical block in front of Sam, saying that it isn't in Miss Dunham's reputation to physically attack people, especially not him. But if she comes at me in an alleyway, tries to, you know, take, tries to do anything, I'm going to really know if I'm that's her reputation. He I was obviously questioning where he was going with this. What laughter did slip out was clearly nervous. And bonus context, the writer fails to mention how painfully awkward a lot of this interview is. Not just because it was difficult to wrangle Sam and get him to focus on a single topic, but also the ironic and thinly veiled threats he would occasionally toss into the interview. Do you own guns? Um, no, I don't own any guns. Do you have a license? Um, no, I don't own a license. You're gonna get one? Uh, you're, you're making me Consider it with you your should. with your creepy look. Well, what if I was? What if we? What if you got two guys in your house and it's just you? What are you gonna do to defend yourself? You gotta get a gun, man. Well, it's at this point where the article just simply goes from cherry picking and reframing information to make me look like I'm racist to literally telling a series of bold faced lies to make it look like I'm actively egging on some guy publicly making rape threats on my podcast. I mean, is there a logical reason as to why this should be so factually inaccurate? Knowing this, beyond this. Point, how can anything else this guy says in this article be trusted? But I, I guess I gotta go through the rest of it anyway. The writer brings up the bleach video for, from that amazing atheist video, which Give me a break. The amazing atheist isn't even part of the alt-right, he's not a white nationalist, which is exactly what the movement has been since the beginning. So we're almost through the entire article here, and the writer has brought up no concrete quotes or connections that would paint me as catering to or aligning myself with white supremacists. The article takes a tweet I made pretty much on free speech principles as some kind of signal that I'm right-wing, but somehow missed the countless other tweets where I'm espousing <laughs> pretty left-wing ideals. And it's not like I don't genuinely state my political opinions in my reviews and on my commentary channel all the time. Um, healthcare is a right, college should be free, legalize all drugs, end US imperialism, take power away from corporations, and favor 90 scrams bans. Um, I don't know, it was like page 99 count. I agree with everything that you said here, but the college thing, we're talking about public universities. And, um, uh, yes, I fully agree with everything you said here. Poop, poopson. Thank you very much. The writer could have done some legitimate research here, but instead he's trying to paint me as being in bed with a racist political movement based off of mimetic humor and a guy whose alt-right sympathies wouldn't surface until after his adult swim show aired? Okay. And while the channel has been controversial in the past, nothing I've said has been any more edgy or out there than 
what you might catch on a new South Park episode, or, I don't know, a Doug Stanhope stand-up special, or another YouTube channel like uh, Filthy Franks, or iDubs, and you wouldn't frame them as being alt-right. Keep in mind nearly all of these people have made much harsher jokes towards some of the same targets I have in my videos on my meme channel. Was I joking about SJWs? Ooh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was, I'll, I'll admit that. But how does that mean that I'm trying to create audience overlap with a guy like Richard Spencer? There's nothing inherently right-wing about clowning rap fans or memes or edgy humor, stapling yourself, ironically bullying other YouTubers, or whatever else I was doing on my other channel. And that sort of leaves me at a crossroads right now because honestly, uh, I'm not really sure what to do with this uh, That Is The Plan channel. I've been debating getting rid of it for weeks now because it's not making money on YouTube. YouTube has made it pretty clear that uh, they're not interested in the content. And again, they're ridiculous. They're shit posts. They're not very marketable, and I understand that. So it's that, and it's also kind of the principle of the thing. Like, why should YouTube benefit off of this content when I can't? Because you know the site is using that content to push people to related videos that are monetized. I mean, I'm not happy about it, but I understand where YouTube is coming from, and I understand there are outside forces at work here influencing the site to be as stringent as they are with advertisements. A lot like the outside forces making me uh, make this video. Tran? Zition, did you give this hit piece a read? If you did, what did you think of it? Uh, down in the description are multiple links to the videos that I mentioned in this article, a bunch of videos that were originally up on that is the planned meme reviews, the rapper series, all that stuff. Uh, just so you guys can see, whoa, am, am I trying to appeal to the alt-right with the content? You'll, you'll watch it, you'll see. And um, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. You're the best. Thanks for watching. Forever.